hydrogen electric hypercar, fully electric swapped 67 Mustang, 60 series Land Cruiser, delicious fresh pineapple snack. I see you on the streets, brothers. We're spending all the money and you're getting the view. I can't kick you out, but you make money out of us. Now we're spending all the thousands. You just can't be a culture vulture. This is Skid Society, and today I come to you from the inside of a Volvo because I came to the LA Auto Show just to check out some lowriders. But stay tuned until the end of the video, and I'll also show you a couple of things that I found interesting. But with that being said, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell if you haven't already, and let's check out some lowriders.
that was the lowrider section of the show, but considering the fact that this was my first time ever attending the LA Auto Show, I wanted to check out what the rest of the convention center had to offer. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, let's go through that footage. First up, there were some more American classics on display, including some old school Chevys and American Muscle. This Mustang was pretty interesting with its body panels entirely made out of red carbon fiber. I thought this booth was somewhat misleading. At first glance, it looks like you can win a Porsche, but reading the fine print, you can actually win a Porsche driving experience. This detailing demonstration was pretty cool. It took me back to the past and gave me some kind of nostalgic vibes for some reason. I don't look at exotic cars as much as I used to, but this Ferrari F8 Spider definitely caught my eye. And just when I thought I'd seen all of the lowriders at the LA Auto Show, I spotted this 1960 Chevrolet Impala convertible in purple named the Virus, an incredible ride that I'd only seen once before earlier this year in Elysian Park. My next stop was the Toyota display, where the first thing I noticed was this old school FJ70 Land Cruiser pickup. There was also a newer FJ70 and even one with six wheels. The Toyota LQ was pretty interesting looking. It looks very futuristic and fuel efficient, not to mention it has glass in the doors, just like a McLaren Senna. This was my first time seeing the GR Corolla in person. From what I've seen and heard, it definitely looks like it would be fun to drive. It's a shame that the Toyota interactive display screens weren't as reliable as their cars. I couldn't get this one to respond to touch. And this other one wasn't working at all. Now, I'm not sure whether they preemptively removed the gear knob to prevent someone from taking it, or if someone had already taken it from this Toyota 86. The GR Supra didn't suffer from the same issue, and it was pretty nice to be in, but weirdly, didn't feel as nice as the 86, but that's just my personal opinion. And now, I'm in the back of a 2023 Toyota Sequoia to let you guys know that new merch is now available on skidsociety.com, including this shirt. And I've decided to keep the Black Friday sale going until the end of the year, so you can head over to skidsociety.com and pick up some merch for the lowest price that I'm probably ever gonna sell it for. The new Sequoia was super nice on the inside, but the TRD Pro trim level is probably a little more my style. It's a shame that the US market doesn't get the 300 series Land Cruiser, but this Lexus LX600 and F Sport trim was really nice to see. Shark is a little bit smoother on that Lexus design. And even more of a treat to be able to sit inside. And those lines do this beautiful design so much justice. As you walk onto the vehicle, you'll notice that this is no longer a manual. Meanwhile, the only thing that I took video of at the Nissan booth was this 400Z GT4. Next up, I had a look at the Hyperion XP1, a hydrogen electric hypercar, which was definitely very futuristic and spaceship looking. This isn't the first Hummer EV that I've seen. I did spot one in the wild, but I wasn't able to get a picture of it. Regardless, I think they're pretty cool. I actually forgot what this electric truck is, so if you know, leave a comment. Nor do I remember which Lincoln this is, but I think I took this video while scouting out interiors to use for my intro. This section of the show featured some off-road Porsches, including this 1974 911 Targa Safari, a 1983 911 SC Rothmans rally car, and a 1991 Carrera 4 Baja. Off-roading Porsches? Now this is a trend I can definitely get behind. The same area also featured a colorful display of the Aston Martin DBX and Ford GT. Sitting on four Giatos, this was my first time seeing the 2023 Range Rover in person, and I must admit, I do like the way it looks from the rear. It was quite surprising to see this very rare Aston Martin Virage shooting brake, only one of seven made. And next up was the West Coast Customs booth, which featured this Honda Civic from their collab with the Nelk Boys, as well as a very low Chevy Silverado, a Chargers themed Jeep Gladiator. I feel like this was a wasted opportunity to make a Chargers themed Dodge Charger a Lamborghini Aventador Roadster, and another classic Porsche 911. This was a fully electric swapped 67 Mustang, which was pretty wild to see. 
I didn't recognize this car, but it's the Singer 21C, a 3D printed hybrid sports car built here in Los Angeles. It was featured in this display alongside a vintage car that was more than 100 years old. I have to admit that the Subaru display was pretty impressive. They even had it raining inside the convention center, along with some foliage and a little bit of an outdoor theme. I sat by the campfire and watched as a new Subaru rolled onto the stage in the rain. And to prove that this wasn't all just special effects, you can see that the Impreza was actually wet. The 2023 Shelby GT500 was on display, featuring some very nice carbon fiber wheels. And I also got my first look at the 2023 Ford Mustang. And personally, I do relate to the people who think that it looks like a Camaro. I had a lot of fun playing with the quirks and features of the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, most notably the power-operated sidestep. Next up, I took a look at the 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona SRT, a so-called e-muscle car. What makes this different from other electric cars is the fact that it actually makes sound through a system of pipes and plenums that force air out of the back of the car, similar to an exhaust system. I got to witness a demonstration of this, which I'll show you now, but it's pretty weird because I never thought I'd be recording electric cars revving on video. <laughs> I almost left the show without paying a visit to Porsche, one of the other main reasons I wanted to visit the LA Auto Show, to check out the 911 Dakar, another off-road Porsche with both the Rothmans inspired livery and without. Pretty exciting to see, but not as exciting as it would be to see one in action. Other notable cars from the show include this Buick Grand National not on stock wheels and this Mark V Supra which I felt somewhat obligated to film since the owner turned on the trunk lights as I was looking at it. Luckily it was parked next to this sweet FD RX-7 that I could pan over to. Last but definitely not least was this booth featuring a Land Cruiser that may not look like much but is actually a 60 series Land Cruiser front end customized onto an 80 series Land Cruiser body. Despite being a huge Land Cruiser fan, I actually only found out about these custom cruisers through a PewDiePie video and funnily enough, they were playing one of his videos on a TV that was part of the display. At this point, I was pretty ready to go home having felt like I'd seen everything that I wanted to see at the LA Auto Show but had I gone home at this point, this video would have had a different title. I initially planned on calling it Lowriders at the 2022 LA Auto Show. So anyway, I headed over to take one last look at the Lowrider cars and possibly get some better footage, especially considering it was nearing the end of the show and a lot of people had cleared out. The best part of this decision was finding a delicious fresh pineapple snack, but the worst part was the reason you clicked on this video. To give you some context, the first and only time I'd met this individual was on Whittier Boulevard in East Los Angeles when he approached me and asked me, where are you from? Which is relevant because I bring this up at the beginning of our discussion. I've since been told by someone close to me that this wasn't such a big deal, which may be true, but personally, where I'm from can be a pretty sensitive topic for me. Anyway, this interaction began when I was approached this time and asked, are you making a video? To which I replied, yeah, I was planning on putting something together. He then said, well, you have to give me a shout out because I spent 40 thousand dollars to put this whole show together. I could quickly see which direction this conversation was headed in, so I decided to hit record on my phone, which was already in my hand since I was in the middle of getting footage. But since looking at the floor and my shorts isn't a great visual experience, I'll add in some more lowrider footage for your viewing pleasure. I thought the golden rolls at the last at the far end they offered them seven million dollars last year. They talk F so give me little props brother I was gonna put a video together, bro. I think I'm gonna scrap it right now. Because okay. I mean, we paid 50 bucks to come in here, but then you say that I'm gonna give you credit. No, I say, throw, I see you in the streets, brother. I mean, we put them together. Yeah, I know, you can check me in the streets. You remember yeah, that? Just a little love, homie, that's all <laughs> I'm just saying. Little love, throw us out there, bro, because we're spending all the money and you're getting the views. Okay. We don't get paid. Just throw a little love, that's it. That's all I ask, homie. A little shout out. If not, then we're cool, dog, you know what okay. I mean? I can't kick you out, but at the same token, you make money out of us. Now. We're spending all the thousands. I want to see you throw a show so we can go film and record and we'll follow you. So vice versa. You know I don't have $40,000, that's for sure. We'll throw a cruise night. We'll back you up. That's a deal. I don't break the law either. 
Yeah, but you're out there filming and making money out of it. Star. That's what I'm trying to get at. We'll well, back what's wrong you, with that? We'll back you up, back us up, throw us a little credit. You know what I mean? A little aid. I tell you, hey, but looking now, this show is made by Rock and Chicano. And at least pull me out there. Let me make a little buck so I can help you out with you. How's that going to make you buck? Because they'll go into my web page. Who is Rock and Chicano? They'll buy a shirt or whatever. And I'm able to do the more shows. So it, I asked you, how are you going to make money back? You said, I'm not. Now I'm you said you sell the shirts. Look, bro, I had to get the sponsors. The insurance was $9,000. I didn't charge none of these cars. I'm trying to break off even. I'm still in the hole, but if I could sell the shirts, I could break off even. I'm able to make pay those bills, bro. That is expensive to come out of here. So if I could just make some little sales, I'll, I'll benefit out of it. It's like, I, I, you, you just can't be a culture vulture, homie. Help us out, dog. We, we, we're here. I see you. You're out there. Just, hey, do me a paro. Hey, hey, check out Rock Chicano. He can do this show. Hey, big props to you. Let's go. Boom. That's it, dog. You never give me credit, homie. Huh? So, if scrap it, do whatever you want, homie. You know what I mean? This is our show, but just a little credit, homie. You know what I mean? That's all I ask. That's all we ask, homie. That's all we ask. A little credit. If it don't hurt, it's beneficial. Pull out the permits, go pull out the insurance, go back to work, go back right behind you. It's a it, 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 we help each other out, you know? Now, I don't really think I have that much to address. I'll leave that to you in the comment section below. But to those of you who might be wondering, why wouldn't you just give him a shout out? Well, I probably would have if I'd been asked. If you've watched more than one of my videos, you've probably noticed me giving shout outs to all kinds of people. Some I don't even know. However, in this instance, I feel like I was being told what to do. Anyway, I'll leave you with some more lowrider footage. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment on this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.